Well, it's amazing how a little bit of puff pastry can transform. So fancy. Yes, very transform fancy. Transform a meal. And Lindsay is here to show us a simple appetizer to take New Year's Eve party to the next level. I love something that's easy to make but looks really fancy. And very fancy. Impressive. So I'm, my love language is food. So uh, I want to cook for like you, you and I want it to be amazing and then I want you to tell me how great it is. So <laughs> Deal. many years ago, I was flipping through one of those like tabloid magazines and I found this Pepperidge Farms advertisement for like holiday puff pastry right. and I made it that year. So imagine my surprise when a couple months ago I had to give up gluten. And I, I'm it's not hard. lying when I say I mourned this appetizer <laughs> because it's like our <laughs> holiday tradition. And so I've made it two ways today. I made the traditional way with okay. the Pepperidge Farms puff pastry. It's the buttery gluten that you mm. love. It's buttery, the croissant, everything's oh, perfect, gluten. flaky, yes. But then I actually tried for the first time a gluten-free puff pastry. So I, I got the Char gluten-free puff okay. pastry dough. So uh, thank you for testing this out for yes. us because gluten free sometimes works sometimes doesn't sometimes works sometimes doesn't and I I as a new person to this gluten free world I kind of feel a little left out there's yeah. a lot of work that goes into it yeah a lot of work and a higher price point yep. so the, the Pepperidge Farms puff pastry you're looking at two sheets for like four or five dollars right the Char gluten-free puff pastry, it's two sheets for about $10. So you gotta it's keep that in mind. It's an investment, but it's worth it because if you've ever had issues with gluten, right. throw My the money at it. Too. Yes, yep. throw the money at it. So I'm gonna get started today. I've got the Char puff pastry out here on my baking sheet. I'd have my oven set to about 400. The difference between a gluten-free puff pastry and a regular puff pastry is you're not gonna get as much movement. So you have to okay. be very careful. You're not gonna get it to spread out. You're not gonna get fancy shapes. It's gonna be very, very basic. But I'm doing the traditional brie and croute. Right. So I easy. Love a little brie. Uh, yeah, holiday scream <laughs> brie. And let's just, if we're all looking at 2020 and we're gonna change our ways, right. get one last, like just <laughs> big old night in on New Year's and, and just go big. So we're just gonna start off. I've got the puff pastry out. I'm gonna put some sliced brie in here. I love using the sliced brie because as it melts in the oven, it's just gonna get all over everything. It'll be nice and gooey. There's really no technique to this. You can't That's go good. wrong. That's because, good. So you're not really baking anything but the puff pastry. Everything okay. in here is good to go without even going into the oven. So you're just heating it up, getting it nice and, and gooey and warm. Then we're going to go with some cranberries. So these are just some dried cranberries right over the top. It's going to give it a nice little sweet tart flavor. And then we're going to counter that with some crunchy walnuts. Now, if you've got Those allergies or if you aren't into cranberries, walnuts, tons of options you can do. I personally love like a dried apricot in there. Mm. Uh, I heard Sunday someone tomatoes. someone singing some some uh, praises for like a, a fig jam. Yes, fig Bobby jam. Loves I don't know who that would have been. <laughs> um, another thing you can do too is fresh rosemary. Yum. Get some fresh herbs in there, really bring out the flavors. And then the trick on the top there is just some good old honey. And that's going to bring everything together. You've got your sweet, you've got your savory. Yum. In the grand scheme of things, if you take the brie out of the equation, it's not all that bad for right. you, but we'll just pretend otherwise. And then I love a, just a good coating of sea salt on there, bring out the flavors. Now what you'll see here is as we start to kind of put it together, this puff pastry falls apart. So you have okay. to be very gentle when you do it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give myself some little, some little panels to fold over. If you're using a regular puff pastry, which if you don't have gluten issues, mm -hmm. feel free to do. You can get a little bit fancier with how you want to design it. You can put twirls in there. You can do leaves. I'm not as well versed in baking with gluten to even give you anything fancy. So we are just going to coat Rustic it on up there. That's what we like to yes, call that. And what's nice is as it puffs up, it does give it a nice... Yeah, it looks pretty. Elegant feel to it. You can throw, you know, you could just do some rosemary on the side there, give it a nice... Um, decorative right. stance, so to speak. Now the kicker with this, and this is something you wanna do whether you're doing the regular puff pastry or the gluten-free is an egg wash. Now an Science egg wash, here. yes, it's not necessary, but it's gonna take your puff pastry to the next level. And what it does, it's basically an egg and some water, you whisk it together, the proteins and the fats in there, they just give it that beautiful golden golden sheen shiny. to it. Yes, shiny. And, and so if you go to the recipe, I've actually got a before and after of a non, oh, okay. non egg wash and an egg wash. And you can really tell the difference. So if you're someone, you're like, I'm going to my boyfriend's family for the first time, or I'm gonna be with new coworkers and I really want to impress this them. This is a good take to work or take to a Very party. easy, super easy. So I'm just using, this is like a, a marinade brush for our right. grill. You don't have to have 
something fancy. Expensive stuff, yes. Mm -hmm. You could use whatever you've got in the kitchen. So I've just got a little egg in there, some water whisked up really well, and you're just gonna coat the pastry. Give it a nice little coat there. You'll notice though, when, when you get some egg on your um, parchment paper, it is gonna bake. You just pull it off at Whatever. the end, no okay. big deal. And then you pop it in the oven for? Uh, 400 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. Now with the gluten-free puff pastry, Keep an eye on it because it's going to react differently, different temperatures, different ovens. Again, it's something, you're We're baking learning. something new. We're right. learning, We're absolutely. Learning. So in your oven here this morning, I did that one for about 18 minutes. It turned out beautifully, that golden. Beautiful. I put a, just a little bit more of that honey on top. So excited. Lindsay, you're awesome. Thank you. This is really beautiful. You can find this recipe on care11.com or just download the free Care11 mobile app and find it there.